Convicts living in Hyde Park Barracks and Carter's Barracks did not have many freedoms. Sent out to Australia for punishment, they were constantly watched, their movements monitored and restricted. And do you know what would have happened to you if you broke any of the tough rules imposed on you by the colonial government? One of the most common punishments was flogging. This involved being whipped with a cat of nine tails, a wooden handle with nine thin strips of leather attached. Men were flogged on their backs, while boy convicts were usually flogged over the breech, meaning on the bottom, usually in doses of 25 or 50 lashes. This broke the skin, caused bleeding, and would have made it very painful to sit down. Other punishments included being confined to solitary cells, walking on a treadmill, and being bolted into leg irons and chained to a work gang. Sometimes while chained to a work gang, they had to wear an uncomfortable suit made from yellow and black wool, designed to make a fool of the wearer. Worst of all, you could be sentenced to a place of harsher punishment, like Cockatoo Island or Port Arthur, regardless of your age. The example of John Dwyer provides us with a lot of details about how child convicts were typically punished. In John's case, we know he faced Hyde Park Barrett courts on at least four occasions, uh, was sentenced to flogging for repeatedly attempting to escape. Uh, described as an incorrigible boy, the principal superintendent of convicts ordered that he be held in Hyde Park barrack confinement cells for two weeks. Now this meant uh, being held in, in complete darkness and fed only a diet of bread and water. As it turns out though, our John was made of hard stuff. He was not to be easily reformed uh, and he soon earned the reputation as a notorious runaway. Even attempts to isolate him further by holding him offshore on Sydney Harbour aboard the convict hulk Phoenix was not enough to curb his bad behaviour and eventually the authorities were left with um, no alternative but to move him on to more remote, harsher penal settlements. The convict settlement of Port Macquarie uh, turned out to be the end for our John Dwyer. Uh, he stayed there for three years. It was a harsh life. He suffered severe punishments and he eventually died in the convict hospital, aged only 13. Secondary punishments like flogging and solitary confinement were designed to break the body and the spirit. Being clapped in leg irons, chained to other convicts and forced to work on iron work gangs was another common form of punishment. Uh, we know of 13-year-old John Donnelly who was sentenced to 12 months working on an iron work gang. And this punishment served the dual purpose of not only bringing a convict to heel, but also providing a central labour force for important uh, building projects, like, like building roads over the Blue Mountains. Uh, being set upon the treadmill worked in much the same way. And as it turned out, there was a treadmill attached to Carter's barracks. Uh, corn was an important food staple in the colony, particularly for the convict breakfast, but it had to be ground. So convicts could be punished by being forced to walk the steps of a large wheel that turned a millstone and ground the corn. Uh, again, our records show 14-year-old uh, William Tadgewell was sentenced to six weeks on the treadmill uh, for making away with his government-issue shoes. <laughs>